my turning point would be honestly would be just realizing yeah. that uh, I was going to die badly and I was going to end up very, very badly. I made my decision when I was in a rehabilitation center. So I said to myself, you know what? Mm -mm. This is not you. This is not me. Mm -hmm. But I made myself a I said, so can't you tell me what I'm saying? And there are so many men that are struggling with this because of so many factors. Yeah. There are so many pressures in life. People have pressures. Society has a certain image about men. How can you be a man at 35? and you have no job. Mm -hmm. These are some of the things that lead them to do these things. Mm -hmm. What I can tell them is that society right now does not get it. You're going to be judged. Ask for help. Mm -hmm. You may hide it for long. You know, there are functioning addicts and there are non-functioning addicts. Mm -hmm. So these functioning addicts are these guys that can go to work, but the guy knows that in the otherwise I will not sleep. That is a functioning person. It's just a matter of time. Is not, is not yet off. It's not yet a full no, no, addict. No, 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 no. A functioning addict is someone that will have, they can carry out their normal activities. That's why they're called functioning. Mm. But it's almost like it's powered by that yeah. alcohol. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the non functioning is the other one who has lost control completely of his life. Mm. You know, uh, fired from job, mm. fired from school, mm. uh, just from school, wife left him, kids mm. have gone. Mm. Those are those are now the, the non function that Chimule made it dingo what you gamb. The weight. Yes. Mm. Now that is one has totally lost control. But the only difference is that it's just a matter of time. Even with my struggles, mm. I still had the farm going on because I was always interested in it. Yeah. But then it was not really picky because mm. uh, whatever kind of profit I would get, drink. I would drink it. Mm. But when I quit is when I really focused on mm. the on Echo Valley. Yeah. And I focused on it uh, through many mistakes, of course, because mm. I did not know at first. But then the, the only thing that people need to take out of this mm. in regards to farming is, please, before you start any project, mm. you can start small, whatever you want. Mm. Like you've said, the guys that are in office, mm. but do research. everybody my name is Renee and I want to welcome you to today's episode which is very um, sensitive to many men <laughs> and also women but mostly to men who have struggled for so long with addictions to drugs addictions to alcohol and sometimes there is no way out especially when knowledge is not brought to them so today I have a one Joel who has got, who has had a phase of life a very interesting phase of life you guys will enjoy it you will see the amazing power of transformation, what transformation can do in a person, in an individual. And it can, life can turn around. Life can turn around 360. Some people call it a shift. Eh? But this is a real shift, guys. And, and, and for me, I'm very passionate about such stories because they're the ones that speak real life experiences. So please get your cup of tea and let us welcome Joel to tell us his story. Hi, Joel. Hi. How are you? I'm okay, thank you. Good to have you Good today. Good to be here. <laughs> thank you for coming through. It's nice to be here. Good. So who is Joel? Uh, Joel is a complicated person. <laughs> in, in simple terms. Yeah. I am 31 years old. Yes, yeah. I'm a farmer. Yeah. I'm also serving in the government yes. of Uganda. Yeah. Um, I am passionate about helping addicts. Yes. Yeah. I'm a family person. Very yes. Good. You mentioned something there, which is our center of conversation today, mm. which is helping addicts. And I want us to go straight to that conversation. I want, us, I want you to take us through your experience, mm. your life before. Mm. Who was Joel before? I think if you if you if you really want to know who Joel was, mm. you'd have to ask so many people that went to school with him, yeah. that got in trouble with him. Yeah. To really understand that what Joel tells you is not a movie. Yeah. What Joel tells you is not a lie. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's um, I've had a life where I've struggled yeah. with addiction. Yeah. But that's not to say that my life started off badly. Yes. Yes. No, I was raised by a single mom. Yeah. And uh, she did everything mm. to make life as comfortable for us as possible. Yes. 
because she educated us mm. and she really filled the role of a father. I did not miss my father at all. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but then um, what this life was, I made it myself. Yeah. I discovered that there was pleasure in alcohol. Yeah. And this was around P5. Oh, yeah. Little did I know yeah. that it was going to take me on a path where I, I would even really hate my life mm. and see it as not worth living. Mm. And uh, it would help me understand, start this journey where I can understand who the human being is yeah. and uh, understand terms like resentment yeah, yeah. and uh, not being able to let go of maybe past traumas mm -hmm. or mistakes for giving yourself. Yeah. Basically, mine is a story of redemption and mm. trying to do the right thing. Mm. Yes. So what are some of those major events you remember? That um, remarkable events in your life in that addiction. How far did it go? Uh, it went as far as, I don't know what the extreme is, but then I've been to police cells. Mm. I, I have lost hearing in one part of my ear. Mm -hmm. My left ear does not work. Um, I've been to 10 schools. Mm. Uh, where it has taken me is really something that is uh, that is hard to explain mm. because it's a long story. Like I told you, it's, it's almost like a movie, yeah. some of the things that I've been through. But uh, I disappointed people. Mm -hmm. And I had so many people mm. on the way. Mm -hmm. However, I don't know if you want me to focus on the negative bits. No, you can do it. Yeah. Both. Yeah, but then um, where I stand right now, uh, I'm someone that, that went through the bad stuff and then I, now I'm here. Mm. You know, I'm, I'm really, I mean, it's been, uh, I'm going to almost eight years now, sober. Mm. Sober? Yeah. Without? Alcohol. No alcohol. I used to, swim, used to drink, I used to smoke. Mm. Yeah, and I used to do even drugs. Mm. But now I'm in my eighth year, wow. not any of that. Congratulations. Thank eight you. years are more. Thank eight you. years are so many for yeah. someone who has into deep addiction. Yeah. Because that means addiction, you wouldn't live without a day, you know, doing that. Yeah. Actually, more. I'll give you some interesting events. Like in primary, I remember it was a, a visitation day, but then I used to go home every weekend. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's this thing, I mean, Mochiga, there's this traditional drink they call Omuisi. Mm -hmm. So I, we had this movie see and I took some of it mm. and I fermented it. Mm -hmm. And then at that time there was also some, there was a waraji called Tyson waraji. Yeah. So I also got this Tyson waraji mm. and I mixed them. Yeah. And this is a P5 kid. <laughs> My friends from primary will recall this. Yeah. I had to be tied to the bed. Yeah. Mm? Because what my mind was <laughs> telling me to do was was just crazy. <laughs> was so, different yeah. from what? Yeah, so that was that was in primary. Mm. And of course, uh, secondary, especially my O level, mm. uh, I was at a school in Chiwuli. In Chiwuli, mm. not Chiwuli, yes, yes, but I was at a school, Chiwuli's neighbor. Mm. So uh, in this school, I was always suspected to be selling booze mm. in school. Mm. To be selling booze and uh, to be basically some kind of boss there, <laughs> yeah. you know, in the in the world of distributing. But there was really never any evidence because mm. I was so good at hiding it. Mm. You know, I'd have like a locker that is empty mm. and I would have my stash there. Mm. Or I would have like these big umbrellas and I would have my stash there and I would put them somewhere where it's visible but you can't suspect that it's there. <laughs> so. Mm. That went on until where I was free. When I, where I gained that freedom was at campus. Mm. Now, with that freedom came the problems because now I had no one to say, you ah, there are no rules here. Yeah, no, yeah. You can go to class or you cannot. Mm. You can leave it. Now, Joel, you know, many men struggle with alcohol and many want to stop mm. or regulate. Um, why do you think it's hard for them? And well, Mm. And, and, and what would you tell a man who is in that pit of addiction and they just don't know what to do to stop? Uh, of course it's difficult, mm. like any habit. Mm. It's difficult to kick. And there are so many men that are struggling with this because of so many factors. Yeah. There are so many pressures in life. People have pressures. Mm. Uh, society has a certain image about men. 
Yeah. For example, how can you be a man mm. at 35, 30, even 27, 25, yeah. and you have no job? You mm. finished university and you have no job. Mm. These are some of the things that lead them to do these things. Mm. Um, what I can tell them is that society right now does not get it, being that we are a third world country. Mm-hmm. You're going to be judged. Mm. If you are in a, a country that really understood it, because here, addict. Even the grandfather was <laughs> They don't know that genetics have a part to play in this. Yeah. Um, the only the, 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 one of the things I can tell these gentlemen is that you have to fight, mm. because uh, the only end game for you is dying a very bad day. Mm. Liver cirrhosis. What do you mean by bad day? Liver cirrhosis. Mm-hmm. That's that's you know the liver is the only part of the organ that can rejuvenate itself. Mm. So but when you get to that stage of cirrhosis, you have your liver is damaged beyond mm. point of coming back. Yeah. So these are the guys you will see with very huge cheeks, very huge tummy. The guy is very small, but he has a very huge tummy, his mm. legs are swollen because it's at that stage and it's a very painful death to die. Mm. Because uh, as you die, you have to have that water sucked out every time. Like you have to go to the hospital and have that water sucked out of your belly every time until you die. Mm. So I'll tell these guys that you have to fight for yourself. How do you fight for yourself? Ask for help. Mm. You may hide it for long. You know, there are functioning addicts and there are non-functioning addicts. Mm. So these functioning addicts are these guys that can go to work, but the guy knows that in the otherwise I will not sleep. That is a functioning person. And it's just the matter. Ten beers is not is not yet a is not yet a full no, no, addict. No, 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 no. A functioning addict is someone that you'll have they can carry out their normal activities. That's why they're called functioning. Mm. But it's almost like it's powered by that yeah. alcohol. Yes. Mm? Yeah. So the non functioning is the other one who has lost control completely of his life. Mm. You know? Uh, fired from job. Mm. Fired from school, mm. uh, just from school. Wife left him. Kids mm. have gone. Mm. Those are those are now the the non-functioning. Chimule mm. The weight. Yes. Mm. Now that is one who has totally lost control. But the only difference is that it's just a matter of time before uh-huh. the functioning addict. Exactly. Now, if someone is a functioning addict, how do they know? Like, like. How how do how do they get help before they get to you know? Now, um, for me personally, I like to use the tactics that I used. Mm-hmm. Uh, for when I stopped like this, I stopped in uh, 2014, mm. to, to 20, 2015 mm. is when I stopped. When I stopped, mm. the first thing I made sure I do mm. is I was consuming about five liters of water every day. Because I had that strong craving. Mm. Like any addiction, I had that strong craving. But then I tried to you make You must sure. replace the addiction with something. Yes. Now, here are some of the things. You must commit to do something that takes your mind away. Be it soccer, uh, exercise, mm-hmm. drinking water. Mm. Now, at the end of every day, just get a small calendar. Mm. And tick every day that what? That you tick your win. Yes. Now, at the end of this, you have to reward yourself. But don't make the rewards too frequent. Because there you will you overindulge. Mm. You can uh, you can maybe say every three weeks, so the 21 days, I'll buy myself a cashat. Or I'll buy myself... Because I've taken 21 days without drinking. Yes. Now, if you can make it past those first 21 days while doing other habits, the other habits are going to develop, you know? So it's like if you if you've decided to start jogging and what the fitness is going to improve, and you're going to feel good about yourself. Yeah. See what these what these substances do. There are these uh, the hormones, the endorphins. Eh? Yeah. There's that good feeling that you have after you drink. Mm. And and someone who is who is not addicted to anything, who is not a drug abuser, mm. they cannot Brilliant. they cannot figure this out. Yeah. The way you you feel good. Maybe seeing your kids playing, mm-hmm. maybe at a party and what did they come in and the key. Is the way the addict feels just that heat mm-hmm. of what? Mm-hmm. Those dopamine and endorphins they are released. Mm-hmm. The same way you feel good after exercising. Mm-hmm. So if you can the thing with alcohol is that 
and drugs is that they block out all these what these mm. uh, these hormones mm. so to unlock those hormones you need more and more and more that's where it becomes a problem mm. so the deep is always that's why every person that is struggling with addiction will tell you this mm. that they always feel like uh, they are always very very depressed the next day when they wake up Mm. So you have to find a way of replacing your your addiction with something positive, mm. but you have to motivate yourself. No, reward yourself. You, no, even, you have to find, reward yourself. You have to motivate yourself because it is, much as it's a, a family thing, it's mm. a society problem. Mm. You, as the person that is struggling with that addiction, mm. you go to that bed alone. Mm. So if if you if you don't fight your battle, like I told you. you it's not your mother that is going to die of cirrhosis. Mm. It's not your wife or your kids that are going to die of cirrhosis. Mm. However, you will leave them with so many questions. But motivate yourself. Find a habit that can replace those bad habits. And also, if it means investing for those who are able to invest, mm. invest a lot of money and go to rehab centers because they will teach you so many ways of coping. Of coping without um, yes. drinking. Yes, because people have excuses. Ah, I'm cutting the bivy concrete. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But there are so many ways of coping. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, there's something you mentioned, which I, I want us to talk about for a minute. Um, you talked about pressures in life. I sometimes push men to do some of those things. Now, I want you to speak to us who are in society. To how do we help men not be under so much pressure? How can we help men, husband, fathers, uh, men in our lives to eh, to help them not go under that pressure. No. Is that possible? Let me tell you something. Society mm. is tricky. Mm. I, can, I would be lying to you if I told you that I know what to tell society to help people not be under pressure. Mm. Because uh, it's it's inevitable. Maybe in a family setting. In a, yes, so family setting is much easier. Mm. A family setting, one of the ways mm. is that you can try to present an image of understanding this person, but be firm. Mm. Don't be a pushover. Just because this guy is uh, addicted, it's not a license for him to be the boss of the house. Yeah. He's not going to come back and, and shout at you and be disrespectful just because he's an addict. Mm. No. The only thing is that you can offer firm support. Mm. If this guy comes back uh, late, you tell him, oh, well, you are doing well for three weeks. You are doing well for two days. I don't say you. You keep nagging him, mm. eh? mm. but uh, you don't let him know that uh, you're chasing him. You know, mm. there, there are these people that react in ways. You know, you're You're not a man. Eh? Mm. The only thing you're doing is you're making this guy go into a state of, you know, withdrawing from society, and he's going to believe it. Trust me, they will believe it. Mm. But when he sits alone and he's in the bar, even his friends, where he has gone, where he has gone, he's going to stay with them. And I want to laugh at him. So you can offer firm support. Those who have the ability, the government, the government can offer rehabilitation facilities like at the alcohol and drug unit. In Butavika, but there's a lot of competition there. It's uh, a small facility. It's a very small facility. I think they accommodate about 40 people now. Mm. So you find that uh, you, you go and believe it or not, you're in a line of like 10 people and you're like the 11. That's for one bed. No, that's tricky. That's so tricky. by the time, by the time your own space is there, you'll be dead. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So what was your turning point? That, that moment that changed your life? Oh. You know, there were so many moments where I thought they had changed, like this is it. Mm. Yeah, I, I, it's not like I was comfortable with it. I tried to quit so many times, mm. but I really kept stopping. But for me, it was this motiv- my main motivation, I would say, was uh, having this, this thing of you have to change for yourself. Mm. So I really, my turning point would be honestly, would be just realizing mm. that. Uh, I was going to die badly, and I was going to end up very, very badly. Yeah. Yeah. There was no particular event per se. Mm. I actually made the decision. It's an interesting story how I made my decision. I made my decision when I was in a rehabilitation center. Mm-hmm. 
So I said to myself, you know what? This is not you. This is not me. Mm-hmm. But I made myself a I said, so can't you tell me about it? I got about 20,000. I gave you a scary. Mm. I told you, a scary. You know? Mm. I know you're going to risk. Yeah. But go out and get me two leading warages, the ones of 200 mils. Mm. Those are 400 mils. Mm. And you get me two cigarettes. Mm. That's sports man. Or bullet. Mm. Now everyone knew. Those that used to see me, they knew that I don't like spirits, but because of money, mm. we have to, to take the spirits. So they knew I used to chug them. Mm. So if it comes, I throw it in. So guy, I told him the balance is yours. Mm. So I threw in four times. A mm. hundred, hmm? hundred. I got, and then I lit my cigarettes and I smoked. And I promised to myself that I'm done. Mm. I struggled. To keep that? Uh, sleeping. Sleeping was a problem. <laughs> for, for, the past, like, for the first like one month, I could not sleep. Mm. I could not sleep. You go in bed and you turn until it is 5 a.m. But I committed myself. I said I will not. Yeah. And luckily yeah. enough, I had these people saw the changes and they started to really, mm. even friends, mm. I said, ah, mm. how is, uh, you know? And I really have, I really have good friends. Some of them are still drunkards, but they know they know that they're really my friends, and they know I'm still pushing them to to stop. To stop. Because even them, in their own struggles, mm. they really do not try to pull me back. Mm. Yeah, but the moments are so many. But I would say I can't really say I have a particular turning point. Mm. Yeah, I just had the desire. It was something that so I was the really. The desire that came. And yeah, it was overwhelming. Made a decision. Mm. The yeah. desire was overwhelming. It was overwhelming. Wow. Mm. Now, one of the things that made you interested me in your story yeah. was actually what you're doing currently, which is farming. Yeah. Um, now, some of you who don't know Joel, he's um, a CEO of Echo Farm Lodge, and it is doing so well. Um, I want you to take us through how you transitioned to this. So even before, uh, even with my struggles, mm. I still had that thing going on. Mm. I still had the farm going on because I was always interested in it. Yeah. But then it was not really picking because mm. uh, whatever cup of it I would get, drink. I would drink it. Mm. Yeah, but then uh, uh, the transition, uh, it was mainly, it was already there. So these two things were happening at the same time. Mm. But when I quit is when I really focused on, mm. the, on Echo Valley. Yeah. And I focused on it uh, through many mistakes, of course, because mm. I did not know at first what I was doing. Mm. Just passion, you know. Mm. Uh, and I'm going with passion. You know, this is all what I money that you have saved. Eh? Yeah. So, so you look at it, yeah, like that. Mm. So it went on. Uh, uh, after a while, is when I did enough research. That's why I always tell people that ask me, oh, how is this? How is it? Always tell him, no, you first do research. Mm. Don't look at Echo Value's story and think that you're going to what? To just go and someone's going to tell you, no, well, look at it. If you have 100 million, you do this instead of doing this. Mm. But you first go and ask. Mm. Make sure you have enough research from many people. Mm. Because even me, I had the passion. So, ah, mm. You know, they discuss, discuss phrase that farming is the way to go. Yeah. I said, hey, and it's hey, everywhere uh, now. Uh, mm. So I went for it, mm. but I had no experience at all. Yeah. You know, I had, I mean, I had the, the, my experience was blood. Mm-hmm. Eh? Mm. It was not serious. So we sent over, we don't know, we don't know. Uh, you, know you don't even really balance books. Eh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But um, I first went and said with chicken, coilers. Mm. Just went and got them from uh, Nagwick in the interior. Mm. About 500 birds, I lost about 300. Mm. Those are the stories that are common. Yes. Of loss and what. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, it's, m- most people that make losses, or actually I can say all people, uh, almost all people, mm. it's because they don't have enough what? Information. Information about it. The fact is that a young, a young person these days, mm. I'll give you an example. Mm. A young person, a young man, mm. can make a living that is very decent from, from farming. Mm. And even get more money than a person that is in the office. Yeah. Because now, uh, 
if I have uh, my area in in Bombo, mm. a liter of milk is 1,600. Mm. Now, if a guy has even one cow like this, mm. ideally it is, if you have one cow, mm. ideally it's supposed to be one cow and it's calf, mm. free range mm. on an acre of land. Mm. But if you have one acre of grass that mm. you chop and dry and bring to the cow, mm. that, that they call hay, mm. you can have between five to, to ten cows in that one acre. Yeah. Very small plot, like yeah. you can find them. Mm. No? Mm. But now a, a person that hasn't done that research cannot know. He will have one acre and he will say, I would rather, I would rather plant trees that are going to take ten years. And also on anti trees, they don't need energy. They don't need so much yes. energy. Someone doesn't want to go. And also the ideology that um, before you do farming, start it small as you're working. Mm. So that uh, once it takes up, then working you... Working where? No, 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 no. Many people who are in offices mm. have that mentality mm. that a farm is a side hustle. Mm. I have to, you know, do it. And many times it ends up failing because of this other yeah, competing yeah. job. So... What would you say someone like that? Now, uh, for those people, those people can keep in their offices. Mm. No one has stopped them from being there. Mm. But then, uh, for me, I like to focus on the young guys that are looking for jobs. Eh? Mm -hmm. Th these particular ones, because now, if you're not giving your farm time, yeah. and you're in your office, yeah. you're going to you're, you're, you're not going to make profit. Yeah. You're not going to make profit. Whatever profit you will make, those workers will take. Yeah. How are you going to monitor the suku? Yeah. When you're in your office and you're going to the farm once a month, twice a month, how are you mm. going to monitor it? Eh? Mm. However, the young guys that are there, the young guys and the ladies that are there, for them at that young age, they can they can make something out of, especially the people that even have parents that have pieces of land. Yeah, vacant. So vacant. many. And even near Kampala. Yeah. Firstly, being so far away, mm. the ones that have them near Kampala. And they still tell you, maybe there's a friend that called me one time and asked me for money. Mm. And I told him, I said, well, you know what, I can help you. But then, why don't you go into this? Mm. I gave him a proposal. I said, I can even give you a room. Mm -hmm. And I told him, ah, I'm one as a sit child. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Mm. So that, that's the mentality that these guys have, the young guys. It's because they have made it look like farming is supposed to be dirty work. Yeah. But you can be smart. You can actually dress the way you dress and go and look at your chicken. Yeah, yeah. Hmm? Yeah. As long as you, you, it's just supervisory. By the way, you only have to work like three hours a day or two hours a day. But when you're there. Hmm. But when you're there. But now boys would rather go for forex train, would rather go for something hmm. that is a bit, um, that looks clean. Yeah. Yeah, than hmm. that. And hmm. I think it's something that people need to learn. But there are so many bad stories. And I don't know why, actually, bad um, stories about farming are the ones that sell most. Yeah, but good news always, I mean, bad news always moves much faster. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah but then, but then the, the only thing that people need to take out of this mm. in regards to farming is, please, before you start any project, mm. you can start small, whatever you want. Mm. Like you say, the guys that are in office. Mm. But do research. Don't just... Know the vaccination schedules of birds. To know how to look after pigs, know when you should uh, deworm them, give them iron, know when you, how you can look after an animal, know how to make your totemic situations for dairy cattle. Mm. You know, mm. you should know all these things. Don't go there and think that, ah, then they do a There is a reason why people give them dry grass. Dry grass. Mm. That is hay. Mm -hmm. There is a reason why people give them silage. But if you don't make research, and the good thing is that now there's so much information. I want to tell me that they don't hide. They yes. don't hide. Yeah. No one tells you I bought 20 goats. No. The following week I went and there was one. The people are open these yeah. days. People yeah. don't hide their failures. Yeah, which is yes. a good thing. Yeah. Now, particularly me, I deal in local chicken. Mm. I don't deal in uh, broilers and all that now anymore. Mm. Well, I have some broilers, mm. but that's just to for that quick cash. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but then for me, I deal in local chicken. And I tell people, the way you see local chicken is not how they are. If you're used to confining them, I mean, uh, letting them go like the way it was in the village, mm. you will not benefit from them. Yeah. Unless you have like 10,000, mm. which are going to sell like on Eid. All of them. Mm. Mm. Otherwise, if it's about profit from them, mm. they will give you eggs, but you must feed them well. Yeah. Yeah? 
you have to feed them like broilers if you want them to what? Mm. If you want them to be hard, towards the market time, release them. Mm. So they move and the meat becomes hard. But until then, first feed them well. Why did you choose um, local chicken? Because many people usually do layers yeah. and croilers because first of all, they, they bring in quick cash. Local chicken, local chicken uh, is, is, uh, is uh, for me, mm. is very profitable compared to especially with the game of numbers yeah. compared to layers mm. if i have uh, let me even give you the small example of 100 local chicken mm. if i have 100 local chicken right now a tray mm. of their eggs i sell i distribute to capital shoppers mm. three branches mm. now they are giving me 25000 mm. on the market when i have excess it is 30000 yeah now if i have 100 local chicken mm. those local chicken you're going to have um, they can't lay like like layers, yeah, eh? yeah, but you're yeah. going to have like let's say two trays. Yeah. Those are sixty eggs. Yeah. Now, those are hundred birds. Yeah. I'm giving you a small calculation. Yeah. You're going to feed them at you're going to feed them one twenty, at one twenty grams per bird. That's twelve kilograms a day. All a hundred birds, mm. one twenty grams per bird. Yeah. Now, those twelve kilograms are going to come to about uh, about. 21,000 there mm. that you're spending with them. About 18 to 21 if you include the workers' money, mm. the 5,000 or 6, 7, whatever your salary you're paying them. Mm. So, you're going to spend about 21,000 on them. Mm. But from that 21,000, mm. if they make two trays, mm. they are giving you between 50,000 to 60,000. Mm. That's 100 bucks for layers. I hear, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I hear that layers you must have at least 200, 200. and above. Yeah. But now, if someone has 100 local chicken, they are like someone who has like 300 layers. Mm. You know? And they're not going to stress you, they're not going to fall asleep, they're not going to do all sorts of things. Yes. Mm. You can even give them 100, 100 grams and they will still maintain production. Mm. See, that's why I prefer them to to layers. Mm. If I had layers, I would probably have to have cages or I would have to have like a thousand layers. But right now I have about 500 local birds. Yeah. And that is it. Mm. Plus the ones which are about to start laying. And can give you the lifestyle that you, you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's so easy. You know, I always try to encourage my friends, mm. even if your farm is in Mbara, mm. you can decide to commit yourself. Go to Mbara mm. and then you come back to Kampala and have whatever fun you want every weekend. Mm. But your source of income is there, and no one is going to touch it. Yeah. You, know, you can commit yourself. The way people here commit themselves, and, and on Friday they are something else. Because mm. <laughs> mm. it's, it's time to cut. You can also commit yourself to that, and then on uh, Friday, Saturday, whatever, you come and do whatever you want in Kampala and go back. Mm. But you know, from Monday to Friday, it's time to work. You're making money that is even not taxed. Have they started taxing? Yeah, they're, um, going to start, they're going to start next financial year. Mm. They're going to start next financial year. We've been paying taxes indirectly. Mm. But now it's going to be. Uh, but it hasn't next been so year. heavy direct on you, so you don't no. feel it no. much. Yeah, the only way it has been a bit heavy has been in the form of fake drugs. So basically, you're buying yeah, nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but then. And feeds. Uh, yeah, and feeds, mm. but then it hasn't taken it away. And and I, I hope, I appeal to the government to be lenient because uh, many people in Uganda, mm. the ones that really want to move our thing from small scale to large scale, mm. many are just starting now. Mm. Mm? Mm. The government is used to, oh, you know, the money is coming from farming, this, this, this. Well, most of them are these people with the Bhutan Bubads. Yeah. Mm? Yeah. But the person who comes to my farm and does research and want to start now, mm. I think for you come and you tax them. Mm? So yeah, but you know, not that the government doesn't see that. It sees that farming is a business like any other. Yeah. And once you're starting a business, whether it's farming, whether it's anything else, mm. tax is inevitable. Mm. So I guess that's the perspective. That's their perspective and it's, and it's good. Mm. But this is the backbone also of yeah. this economy, this whole country. Yeah. So we have to go in having made that research. Mm. They have to know exactly what they're going to do. And you know, their projects now, if you start taxing a person that is on this PDM program, for example, mm. already you've told him it's going to take back 60,000 at the end of the financial year. Yeah. Which is good. But then you're going to tell him, okay, now 60,000 plus 100,000 for tax. 
Kabumari Tabi Hatch. Doesn't add up much. Exactly. Well, so um, as we bring this to a close, eh? um, the land where you do farming from, now I'm, I want you to speak to someone who has not yet started out. They've had the desire to do farming. It's a dream that runs in their head every day. What are your one or two words for such a person? Apart from doing the research that you mm -hmm. mentioned, what are some of those steps? That. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. What are some of those other steps they need to be very cognizant about? Um, you must, you must, you can, you can, you can start even from a plot of uh, fifty by hundred. Mm. You can, you can do the type of farming that you want. Mm. Uh, you should not be limited by the space that you have. Mm. You should not be limited by the distance you are from from the city. Mm. The, the, of course, distance to the market also matters, mm. but you're supposed to see the type of activity you want to take part in mm. and look at the market, look at your immediate market. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go to, to Karamoja and start a dairy farm there. Of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you look at your immediate market and know exactly how to maneuver and know what kind of things. It still goes into research. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but you shouldn't be limited. Even a plot of 50 by 100. People are in Kambala and they are rearing animals. Yeah. And they just source the, the feeds from out. Mm -hmm. So you, can, you shouldn't be limited by that. And, and also you should know that losses, you know, um, mm. hey, when, you, when you get losses, don't, don't abandon. Yeah. If you hear all these big success stories you hear people having gone through a lot mm. i had this business got wiped out yeah, yeah. i suffered this is this. my seventh business exactly yeah there, there will be a point where you will break mm. if you keep pushing you will break even yeah yes wow is there anything else you'd want to share then? Uh, i want to i want to state that particularly those people who are going through any kind of addiction mm. That, that it's you are not alone yeah. it feels like you're alone but you're not alone there are so many people that that love you but then they don't understand the disease yeah they it's don't know disease. how to help you they don't know how to help you they are puzzled but uh you can reach out to professionals to help you yeah. the important thing is that you have to know that you're struggling here and you have to fight it's a fight for your life yeah if if there is anything that uh that uh, professionals can do for you. Mm. Please be open, have an open mind, be be open to change. Know that it will not be easy. You will feel feelings of anger, regret, shame. Mm. But at the end of the day, you have to fight for yourself. Within mm. within a year or so, you people will start to compliment the different person that you are. Yeah. Don't expect that you've done damage for. Uh, 10, 15 years mm. and people are going to look at you different after a week mm. uh -uh. Mm. but you're not alone mm. please uh, reach out for help seek for help reach out uh, there are people that are willing to help you mm. and give yourself time forgive yourself whatever you've done mm. and be patient know that at one point if you keep fighting you'll be successful yeah, and you start again yeah. it's possible to start it again. is it is Thank you so much, Joe, Thank you for, for sharing me. your story. This is one of those stories that um, is very interesting because the shift was so big. Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> like <laughs> from one person to another profitable person. Maybe right now you've been rehab. Maybe right now you've been another rehabilitation dead, center. Dead. But look at you mm. doing, uh, you know, big purposeful farming. And, you know, uh, your life is now profitable. This is what we want to hear. This is what we want to project out there that it's actually possible mm. to rise again. It's possible to start again. It's possible to get out of that addiction. So mm. thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. I hope this conversation was helpful to everyone that has watched. Till next time, bye-bye.